Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I am going to continue my journey with Bunnehaben, hand fill exclusive warehouse edition. And today I have reju rejuvenated French oak. It is a 20 CL bottle. It is whiskey base number 135450. It is a warehouse nine, hand fill exclusive. And it is 57.3%. So if you're looking for the whiskey base number 135450. So I paid um, 40, 45 pound, pounds for this. Now, there is a tiny little problem for me with this bottle. What is the problem? I don't know how old it is. It just says rejuvenated French oak. It does say the date that it was bottled, 24th of October 2019 from Elise and um, Proctor, and um, it does say the ABV 57.3, but it doesn't say when this was originally, what vintage it is, what year was this distilled? I have no idea. So that would have been great to have a year as well. Now, the second thing I don't know is um, rejuvenated French oak. What type of oak? Now, there are various types of French oak. Did you know that? So we actually have the Quercus robur, which is the European oak, and we have the Quercus petrea, which is the Cecil oak. It's a much finer grain. Now this is probably the Quercus robur. Uh, Quercus alba is what we have in America. That is the American white oak, and the Quercus robur is the European oak, more or less. And um, it would have been nice to also know what type of product was in the barrel beforehand. All right, so um, it could be a limousine oak. It's a very loose grain. Makes it very suitable for cognac, amagnac, sherry, and whiskey. But it can also have been a very, very fine grain. Uh, Uppli is one of the forests in France that is very, very... Um, very costly wood. Now, a normal um, European oak barrel costs about $800, $850, um, which is a lot. American oak um, barrel, $100, $150. So, six times that for the, basically here, for the French oak. But they can go upwards to over $4,000 per barrel, depending on what um, area of France you got it from. Alias um Tom Cass Vosges my French is terrible sorry and there are many other regions that are um that make very well known barrels and um have great grain there's um coarse grain there's medium grain there's fine grain and super grain and that's of always the question of how closely those rings of the trees are and um it's talking about the growing pa growth patterns so the slower the wood um the trees grow, the finer usually the, uh, that grain pattern is. All right, so now going back here to our nice little bottle, I am going to compare it to a um, whiskey from Buna that I've already tried, the bourbon barrel. So then a bourbon barrel says it's from 2007. So that's nice to know. So that's what the inquiring whiskey drinkers want to know. So 2007, so this was bottled in 2020, so it was 12 years old. Let's assume it could be 11 and a half, but it's a 12 year old. This was bottled in 2019. I mentioned that in my last video as well. It's amazing what happened to the whiskey um, industry for the hand fills. So Buna Haben just bought, um, built a brand new visitor center. Unfortunately, before that, COVID happened, so the country locked down for two years. So there were hardly any visitors whatsoever. And so um, this was bottled on the um, 24th of October. So, yeah, the main visiting session, is, session season is in the summer. And so towards the, the fall, the winter, and the next spring. Oh, the next spring, the country was closed down. That was 2020. 21, country closed down. 2022, I made it over to there. It's two years between over two years, almost two and a half years between where this was, this hand fill was hand filled and where I actually bought it. So amazing. Now, the other thing that I actually um, did before I went and started 
talking to you at this video is I actually took a look at the phrase rejuvenated French oak casks. And one of the very, very first things I found out was that there was a rejuvenated French oak finish cask from Deanston. It's a 2005 version. Hmm. So the Deanston hand-filled 2005 rejuvenated French oak finish. I hope this is not a finish. I hope it's a full maturation. I assume. 55% uh, exclusive distillery whiskey. Um, in stock at the moment, actually 90 pounds. So Deanston belongs to Distill, Buna belongs to Distill, Tobamori slash Legic belongs to Distill. I did not find any rejuvenated French oak there. So the next question is what cooperage actually rejuvenated these French oak casks for them? Now, what does rejuvenated French oak actually mean? So you take an old, tired French oak cask. Could have been a wine cask, could have been a cognac cask, could have been an armagnac cask, could have even been a whiskey cask. We don't know. All right. Hmm. And so you actually take a, um, uh, like a router and you have that a little spinning blade there. And you take the barrel and you put that in there and you actually cut off maybe about a three eighths of an inch. So let's go for about five millimeters. All right. So it might be between a half a millimeter, one millimeter, between three quarters of a um, three eight three eighth of an inch to half of an inch, and you just shave that off. You turn the barrel, you have that router going back and forth, and you can actually shave that off. It's like a planer. Now, um, I was just googling this. I went down the rabbit hole. Rabbit hole. I spent about an hour watching videos about casks being rebuilt, about being rejuvenated, about being re. Um, so it was called STR, shaved, toasted, and recharred. And I actually found this nice little video on whiskey.com um, where there was a Kawasaki robot tandem machine. So the one robot arm picked up the barrel put it into this machine, the other side closed down there, he, the arm went away, it closed back up, and from the other side, the other robot arm took the barrel, turned it upside down, you saw all the dust and shavings fall out. And he put it onto this, um, this, um, wow, I forgot the English word, conveyor belt. And uh, the conveyor belt put it over to a place where it actually was new, uh, newly charred. So you actually saw the flames coming up. It might have just been toasted, but it looked like they were charring them. So you shave the barrel, you toast often, and then you then re-char. So that's what's happening. Dr. Jim Swan introduced that phrase into the vocabulary of all these new distilleries, Kill Holman, and also here, um, Coswolds, and a lot of other places, STR, um, Cavalon, and, 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 and. So this is not an STR, this is a rejuvenated French oak cask. So the first thing that I realized here is the color. Bourbon, French oak. French oak is darker. Now, I could actually um, show you a picture at Deanston. Uh, I was there a couple weeks ago in May, and what you had was a, um, you had American oak over 30 years, you had um, European oak over 30 years, and of course the European oak is darker, and French oak is European oak. And so what happens is are the pores are much darker, and it gives up more of that um, tannin, much more of that coloring, and much more of that flavor. It has nothing to do with the sherry, it has to do with the wood itself. And so you're getting actually more darkness per barrel from a European oak than you would from an American oak. Now, the European oaks are more expensive, that's why we rejuvenate them. I would like to talk to a cooper one day that has been rejuvenating casks for a couple of decades and ask him how often can you rejuvenate a cask. So the thickness of a stave is about, what, one and a half inches, maybe two? So if you take off uh, a half an inch each time, I think you could rejuvenate maybe twice without having a danger of it leaking. But of course, the thinner the staves, um, the more pressure they have to hold and the more chances apparently you have of leaks and of having um, 
a problem. <laughs> All right, very, very, very good. So let's snows the bourbon. It's very American oaky. It's a little bit of a oaky spice in there. I almost get like a little bit of a honey vanilla uh, toasted moment. The French oak, on the other hand, I get a much more of a maritime. There's more salt here. Um, there's more of a citrus. It's almost like a, like a lemon sherbet moment. There's a, I don't know if I can smell it or not, but it's going to be a white pepper. It's going to be a little bit of a ginger. That, not a ginger ale, not sweet. It's that ginger as if you're biting into ginger, uh, a ginger root. It's very, very intense. A little bit of vanilla. And almost a, a little bit of like a sour grape moment. If I were to choose between the two of these, at least now, knowing what these two are, I would pick the American, the bourbon barrel. Um, that French oak is not really doing it for me. I'm going to test, I think, five or six um, samples of Buna that are not normal, um, that are special releases, hand fills, and so on, and see if I can identify the different types of oak casks um, finishings they received or the full maturation in these cases. Cheers. Mm. I would assume that this whiskey is much, much younger. This is a 12 year old. I get white pepper, I get heat, I get a long lasting burn from the alcohol. There's that woody sappy moment going on here as well. It's a peppery moment, actually. What remains is a pepper, like a white pepper. And there's a little bit of ground cinnamon in there. And a lot of oak spice. Hmm. I'm not really sure about this one. This is not going to be my favorite. Um, it is fascinating to see the difference what um, the wood casks can do to the same spirit. So these were not in any way distilled in a different manner. They were probably both filled into the cask at the exact same barrel entry proof, let's say 60, 63.5%. This has less, this has more, so this is gonna be younger, this is gonna be a little bit older. So we're talking about maybe a nine, a 10 year old bottling here. This is 12. Um, it might have to do with the cask and it might have to do with the amount of um, angel share each cask gives how big was this cast i don't know was it a sherry butt could have been a french oak is it a hogshead could have been french oak um this is a standard american american standard barrel abs um and this is going to be our 190 200 liter thing um put some water in it get a little bit more of a barrel char moment Get that sour grape moment, a little bit of maritime notes, that saltiness. Tiny little bit of seed weed. Huh. Now that the heat has dissipated somewhat due to the dilution, there's an oiliness here. I am not a great big fan of French oak, at least not this variation of rejuvenated French oak. If I were to have a choice, I would definitely go with the bourbon barrel. Cheers. Mm -hmm. With water, the 55.7% is better. Um, with water, the... Um, 57.3% still gets you a little bit. So my question of the day, this is going to be a C, C minus product, um, value for money. Still going to give it a C minus, D plus. Why? Because, hey, I have a hand fill from Bunahabin. It wasn't peated and it was something special and different and I have it and I'm happy. So it was worth the experience being there and bringing this home with me just for that amount of money. 
So would I go out and buy it on an auction site? No. Personal opinion. All right, so my question of the day is what other whiskeys doesn't have to be Buna? Do you know of that actually have a French cask finish or maturation? And it could be even a rejuvenated French oak cask. And the last question, if anyone knows where Distill gets their rejuvenated French oak casks from, I would be very interested to know that. Write that down in the comments so I can continue to learn and understand what's going on where in the whiskey industry. All the best. Thank you very much for watching. Whiskey Jason here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell others about this crazy guy over here in Germany. Often tasting whiskey you will never get your hands on. So sorry. Bye-bye.